don't you just kind of share with us a little bit about the history of uh, Ted and how he got in the car wash business? Ah, okay. I uh, uh, I started the car wash business actually on uh, March 28th of 1969 uh, in Portland, Oregon for the uh, Rub It Up Car Washes, which was a division of uh, Hanna Enterprises uh, at the time. And uh, back when uh, Dan Hanna Sr. Uh, uh, had the company, and uh, that was a r I was 15 years old, just about to turn 16. And uh, my dad used an uh, automatic car wash, and I'd, I'd gone with him on a Saturday morning in when he got his car washed, and they had a help wanted sign, and, and uh, I applied, and I've uh, been in the car wash business ever since. Seven years uh, with Hannah there in, in Portland, Oregon, seven years of experience uh, uh, at uh, 16 uh, in uh, uh, the summer of 69 uh, that I was the youngest um, uh, training assistant manager that uh, they'd ever uh, put on in that position at 16 years old and and uh, worked uh, um, after school and, and uh, weekends and and uh, still put in over 40 hours while going to school and uh, as a training assistant manager and uh, with that I was of course left um, two nights a week from five uh, till eight o'clock we closed in charge of the store and then uh, ran it on Sundays and and uh, when I uh, uh, finished with my schooling, uh, I uh, was immediately made the assistant manager of the highest volume car wash that he had, and uh, six months later was given my own store and was the uh, manager of, their, of his uh, second highest volume car wash that he had, and uh, six months later was given the uh, opportunity, they were building a brand new car wash, and I had the uh, uh, pleasure and got the opportunity to uh, open a brand new car wash up from scratch and hire all the people, train them, and, and so forth. And uh, uh, of the seven years, spent five years in, in management of car washes for Hannah, and spent the last two years uh, in his uh, American management team that uh, was where uh, experienced managers that had opened branches for him and started them from scratch, trained people and so forth, uh, would get sent out um, sometimes with uh, somebody new getting into the business that had bought car wash equipment from him that I'd get sent out the first two weeks to help him train employees and, and uh, show them the different guidelines for their labor and so forth and, and work with them and help them get started the first two weeks. So here you got involved in Red Arrow and how did that, that all evolve? Well, um, actually I was sent to Red Arrow. Um, the original founder, John B. Walker, who uh, founded them back in 1971 uh, and opened them up in Jackson as exterior car washes. And uh, uh, he was a uh, Texaco wholesale distributor and retailer and, and uh, his uh, main uh, thing was uh, marketing gasoline. And he'd had some exterior car washes with uh, Hanna car wash equipment in them and a uh, uh, full ton of wash. And of course, back in those days, they'd give that wash away free with the gasoline that was used as a, as a petroleum marketing tool. And, and um, he got involved with uh, two car washes on the coast that were full service and um, recommended by uh, Hanna, a guy that had bought Hanna equipment and then his financing fell through. And, and uh, so it was an opportunity for him to get in there with the, at the right price uh, with somebody in trouble and kind of pick them up uh, below market value and, and operate them. So uh, John B. Walker, at uh, Hannah's advice, uh, uh, picked them up. And he, uh, he got those in uh, July of 75. And uh, nine months later, realized that he didn't know what he was doing operating full service car washes and that uh, he was in trouble with them. And, and of course uh, asked Hannah for help. Hannah sent me out for two weeks to uh, see what they were doing wrong, to troubleshoot, give advice, and try to help them out. The, uh, um, I've always, uh, uh, well, I've had experience with uh, exterior car washing. Uh, I've always been a full service car wash man. And uh, you know, there, there's a certain uh, segment of the people that want their car completely clean, full service. Uh, th they don't. Um, they don't want to get a wand wash out and get themselves wet. They don't want to. They're not interested in spending the time to do that. These are, are your your working professional people that they want their car clean inside and out, and they're willing to pay to have that done. And that's a segment that has always been there uh, from the back in the '60s when I first started in the business, and has always been there ever since, and will continue to always be there. And uh, uh, these are people that want that done and will pay to have it done. Um, uh, when you're operating, going after this clientele, uh, you've got a, a uh, uh, 
clientele that is, is repetitious. Uh, you, you, you make regular customers out of that. They're not the bargain hunters, they're the regular customer. And you know, it, it's my opinion that you need, to, uh, you need to offer the best and do the best that you can with it and then charge and get paid for what you're doing. And uh, as long as you're doing that and you give somebody a, a car wash in a, in a reasonable quick amount of time, uh, do a quality job and treat them well, then they'll pay the price that you ask and you'll be successful in business. You can make loyal repeat customers out of this clientele. And I've always uh, steered away from uh, trying to cater to bargain hunters. You know, you just aren't going to make a healthy living catering to bargain hunters. Bargain hunters are not loyal. As long as you got the bargain, they come to you. But when you don't, somebody else does, they go to them the next time. And it's, it's, it's very difficult to play the uh, the low price guy, the uh, trying to go after the bargain hunters and, and have a business successful long term uh, based on uh, now, uh, um, exterior car washing. I've always uh, uh, steered away from that. Uh, basically, I think what you're doing is you're going after the bargain hunter, the guy that wants the cheap car wash and is not willing to pay the high price. These are bargain hunters and they're not, uh, they don't make loyal customers. They're your customer as long as you have the bargain, but next time somebody else has the bargain, they're off over there. They're not loyal customers. You can't build a long-term permanent business off these people because they're not loyal to anybody. Uh, the, um, uh, you know, you, you see this popping up and it seems like it comes and goes in cycles that uh, uh, now they're calling it the express wash. and. And uh, they're, they're popping up like crazy and they offer nothing, but the customer stays in the car, rides through, and gets a tunnel car wash for about anywhere from 3 to $5. And, and uh, uh, that's nothing new, nothing new to the market. Um, uh, they were doing that back in the, uh, in the, in the late 60s and the 70s. Uh, uh, and uh, in fact, in the, in the early 80s, about uh, 82, most of them uh, went under or converted to full-service car washes. You cease to see the exterior wash that uh, uh, was there for a little cycle, uh, late 70s and the, up until the very uh, early 80s, about uh, five, six years that they had a, had a run of them and then they, uh, they all seemed to die and go by the wayside. And so you hadn't really seen those until recent and now once again, it's like you're gonna do another cycle, it's the trend to, to do that exterior wash uh, under the name of Express Wash. And uh, again, uh, it's, um, uh, some of them are doing okay to start with, but again, you're going after the customer that's not going to spend the money to get a quality car wash that wants the inexpensive car wash and uh, uh, so I just uh, I don't see that as a long-term lasting thing or something that you should build your your uh, business on